Today we're going to wait for the sun to set and we're going to fly the TBM 850 from St. Pete Clearwater down to Miami, Florida. Here we go. Welcome aboard everybody. This is going to be a fun flight. We'll be taking off just around sunset here at St. Pete and heading on down to Miami. Start up the TBM. Clear outside. Starter is on. Waiting for the NG to rise up and stabilize. There it is. Watching the ITT for hot start. NG for hung starts. Those are your two most common Malfunctions in the start cycle on a turboprop. It's looking like a good start. All right, go through the flow. Observation. Wind 320 at 13. Visibility 10. Sky clear. Temperature 29er. Dew point 21. Out temperature 29er 86. Visual approach runway 36 in use. Clearance of breeze command ground control on frequency 121.9er. Advise initial contact. Give up information uniform. All right, first step done. We got the ATIS. Now we'll go over to ground and pick up our IFR clearance. Pete Crown, good evening. November 851 Tango Bravo over at Signature of the Uniform looking to pick up our IFR. November 851 Tango Bravo, St. Pete Crown, full roof clearance, uh, clear to Sopalaka Airport via radar vectors, Savvy intersection, that's Sierra Alpha Bravo, Echo Echo, direct Roxanne, that's Romeo X ray, X ray Alpha November, Jingle 6 arrival, fly heading 270, climb maintain 1600. Expect one seven thousand one zero minutes after. Departure frequency one one eight point eight. Squawk zero zero five zero. Clear down to Opalaka radar vector CV Roxanne Jingle six uh, two seven zero on the heading one thousand six hundred on departure. I'll expect one seven thousand ten minutes after eighteen eight. Departure frequency squawk zero zero five zero. And ray five one ten row. I'm ray five one ten row. Ray back right. All right, we got our IFR clearance. We got it all set up in the uh, flight plane into the computer of the airplane, and now we'll call for our taxi. St. Pete Ground, over 851 Tango Bravo, over at Signature with Uniform Ray Taxi. November 851 Tango Bravo, runway 36 at Alpha 6 intersection, departure taxi, we out. Alpha to runway 36 at the Alpha 6 intersection, November 851 Tango Bravo. All right, here we go. Miami, Florida, Opalaka, here we come. We used to Signature FBO here at St. Pete. All right, so this is Alpha Intersection right up here in front of us. Now we're going to turn right and right over to our right over there. You'll see Alpha 6. That's where we're going to be taking off from. Look out at the wings. Make sure our flight controls are free and correct. And we will go over to the tower frequency. Now that we're coming up here on Alpha 6, you can see right out there to the left. Thank you, Tower. Good evening. Another 851 Tango Bravo holding short of 36 at Alpha 6. He's finally getting out of here, huh? He's finally one tank of Bravo, only 36 out for 6. Clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, we're only 36 at Alpha 6. Now we're only one tank of Bravo, thanks. Alright. We'll cross the hold short line here. Clear to the left. And the final down there to the right is clear. 
Four flights telling me we're entering the runway 36. We got 7,400 feet remaining. Line up here in center line. You can see all the black marks of all the tires that touch down here. All right, here we go. We'll ease the power up here and take off power. It is set. Well, temperature pressure is all look good in the green. I'm pushing pretty a good amount with my right leg here to keep us on the center line. The airplane wants to go off to the left when you said take off power. And there's a rotation speed. And we'll go gear up. Gear is up and indicating up. One saying a Bravo. 270 heading, time departure. How's it going? 270 on the heading, over departure, one tank of bro. Have a good day. I'll go flaps up, yaw damper on, and over to departure frequency. Departure, good evening, November 851 tank of Bravo, 500 climb to 1600, turn left to 270. 851 tank of Bravo, Tampa departure, ID. Here's your ID, one tank of Bravo. All right, we're going to roll out on a 270 heading here. You can see, wow, the sun is setting over the Gulf of Mexico. Beautiful. One Tango Bravo, we're to contact two west of St. Pete, I'll hire shortly. Roger, position checks, one Tango Bravo. All right, we put the autopilot on. It's going to be capturing at 1,600 feet, and I got the heading bug, as you can see, set to 270, and we're on uh, heading mode. And, and there we have captured okay, 1,600, which is set up in our altitude free selection. One, number one Tango Bravo, climb maintain 1, 2,000. Climb maintain 1, 2,000, one Tango Bravo. All right, so we're going to put 1,000 in our L2 pre-selector. We're going to arm that VS 3,000 feet a minute. And we're going to go into 850 mode. So I'm going to pull the power just under 100%. Flap lever goes up and over the gate. I'm also going to turn off the inertial separator. And now we can utilize our torque above 100%. Just got to be careful though, because we can over-torque the engine when we're in, over in 850 mode. You also have to be careful. You could over temp the engine or also over NG the engine. So those are the three things. Bravo, turn left 160. Left 160, one Tango Bravo. All right, one. one. Right up. 160 set up. Five out, Sierra, to the power. On the heading bug. The plane will turn over the power, down to the southeast up. there. Beautiful view out there. This has got to be my favorite time to fly airplanes. Right as the sun is setting into the night. So the airspeed is bleeding off, 140 knots, I'm going to hit the IS button. Now the airplane will continue to hold that airspeed for the rest of the climb. To take a look down here at 4 flight on the iPad, this is our route. You can zoom in and you'll see our airplane right there, a breadcrumb trail of where we've been and you'll see, you can see our glide advisor. And if you scroll on up, that is the routing that we have. We're going to go up to 17,000 feet and join the Jingle 6 arrival into the Miami South Florida area. That's our altitude alert for 1,000 to go. 1, 1,000. Climbing to 1, 2,000. And we're leveling out. And I'm pushing over here on the left side of the yoke over the, the rudder trim, pushing it over to the left. Anytime you level out, you're going to want to push it to the left. If you're climbing, you're going to push the rudder trim over to the right to keep the plane in coordinated flight. And the little indicator to show me where the trim is at is right down here on the center console. One thing above a flighting on 150, contact Miami Center 132.35. 3235, 15, you're on the heading, 851, thing abroad. Good day. Good evening, Miami, November 851, Tango Bravo, 12000 on a 150 heading. 851, Tango Bravo, Miami Center, climb, maintain 17000, Fort Myers, Altimer, 2985. 2985, up to 17000, 851, Tango Bravo. All right, so we have 17,000 set up in our altitude pre-selector. We're going to arm it and VS again up to 3,000 feet a minute. Yeah, flying at night is a United lot of fun. 1458, clear direct Remus. For the most part, most pilots fly mostly during the day more than they do at night, unless you're like a cargo pilot. I like flying at night. Usually the air is just a little bit more smooth. And, you know, it's not so hot with the sun. What do you guys like? Do you guys like flying day or at night better? Leave in the comments below. To me, I, I like 
boat get better views during the day. So we're climbing about 2,600 feet a minute is what the plane's doing right now. I'm just watching that airspeed. Because I am in VS mode, the airplane could stall out on its own if I didn't pay attention to that. You'll see it's bleeding back off. Coming up around 140 knots, we'll go back into IES mode. Now, we should not have to worry about the airplane stalling out if everything works like it should. Alright, 851 Tango Bravo, clear direct Roxanne. Direct Roxanne, one Tango Bravo. So we scrolling down with the cursor to Roxanne, direct, enter, enter, and we go into nav mode. And we're basically direct Roxanne on that 150 heading, so there's not much of a change in uh, direction. Beautiful view over there. The sun is just about to dip down over the horizon. And we're capturing 17,000 feet. Once again, using the rudder trim here to trim over to the left as we're leveling out. Now we're just going to let the airplane plane out and build up momentum with the airspeed, and then we'll set our cruise power. Yeah, this is my favorite time to fly right at this time of the day. I've been getting to do this as a job is a very rewarding career in my opinion. I could never see going back to a different type of career where I'm not flying airplanes. If you guys are thinking about becoming a pilot, maybe getting a job like this or something else, my friend Jason Chapper has m08.com, it's an online ground school. I'll link it in the description. Basically, we'll be able to help guide you along to save time and money and get your ratings. I'll link in the description below. All right, so we're at 17,000 feet. Our airspeed has basically gotten as high as it's going to get. So now we'll set our cruise power. So I'm just going to pull the torque back a little bit, because as we pull the prop RPM back now, the torque will rise. So I'm going to pull back the prop RPM here to 1,900. So with the blue lever here in the middle down at the center console, I'm going to pull that back. And also the torque is rising a little bit. That's why I pulled that back before I set it. So you don't over torque the engine. And now we can advance that torque. We're right up almost to the red line. Three five nine or two American twenty. I'm not gonna go too crazy with it. There you go, now you can see we're right almost set at max torque for this flight. And we're good to go, only showing 759 degrees Celsius on the ITT. And our NG is only around 97, 98%. And oil temperature and pressure is all look good. And we'll go over and get the ATIS. Wind 090 at 11, visibility 10, sky clear. Temperature at 28.20, All right, we have information X-ray, just monitoring both frequencies there at that time. So now that we have information X-ray, we know we're going to want the RNAV for 9 left. We'll go to the airport tab, we're on the approach page. There is the RNAV 9 left, tap on that, and there is our approach plate, so we'll be able to get that all set up. Niner Kilo Tango, Roger, uh, VFR, actually stay with me. You guys enjoying that sunset over VFR. there? Maintaining VFR, Niner Kilo Tango. You have a girl you want to impress and you're dating her, now's the time to bring her up at this time of the day. Nothing more romantic than taking your girlfriend or your wife up for a nice Sunset flight tonight. I have you guys on board. So I hope you guys are feeling romanced. I guess I could get a quick little Instagram story here. To show you guys who follow me on Instagram our situation. To do a little story here. If you guys aren't following me on Instagram, be sure to go over there. All right, story is sent to Instagram. Yeah, I'll call with it. yeah if you guys go over there, uh, down in the description below is all of my different social media that I'm on. You can follow along in between flights and see all the behind the scenes of what I'm up to. All right, here we are over Roxanne. The airplane's gonna turn to a one Wow, oh, good view out the front. That would be Fort Myers coming up. A 
lot of people don't really film uh, at night in the uh, flight community. Everybody usually just does day flights and films them, but uh, you know, I like to get to you guys up here once in a while. I have a high suspicion that they're going to want to put us at over Jingle at 6,000. So I'm going to go on the VNAV here at 6,000, right at Jingle. With a descent profile of 1,500 feet a minute, we will would want to descend in 6 minutes and 28 seconds. We'll see if that happens. Some of the different challenges when flying at night is especially when you have thunderstorms to deviate around and there's no moon in the sky. It can be really hard to see exactly where all the storms are at. I mean, you do have your next red onboard weather radar, but it can be challenging trying to pick your way through storms. Normally, you'll see all the lightning pops in the different storms, you know, to stay away from that area. That's a good telltale sign of where to stay away from if you don't have onboard weather radar or next red. November 851 Tango Bravo, this is the main chain of 111,000, the Miami Altimeter 2985. 2985, we'll go down to 11,000, 851 Tango Bravo. Alright, so we'll start our initial descent here, 11,000 setup. We're going to arm in VS, 1,500 feet a minute. And now that we've started down, we'll also adjust our pressurization for our field elevation when we land. So it depressurizes right at the uh, appropriate time. And as we now start our descent, I'm going to back off the... Actually, there's our VNAV profile, so she's starting us down right when we were supposed to go down. So I'm going to pull the power back, because as we descend, our uh, torque will want to rise. Uh, we do not want to over-torque the engine. We can dim the panel lights here if we wanted to, with these knobs right down here. Miami, good evening. Normally, I like to lower the lights when I'm at cruise altitude. To look out the window is pretty low, just so I can see good enough to monitor everything. But then when I get down low and I actually, you know, maybe do an approach or land, I like to keep the lights a little bit brighter. But if I was just have a cruise altitude, I wouldn't want to have blaring like this because it wrecks your night vision. So I would turn them down to like how about that the intensity. But we'll turn it back up. the rest of this flight and we can also adjust each little display here how bright we wanted to get it turn those down a little bit and what's nice for flight right now because after sunset it goes to the uh, dark mode automatically like during the day this display would all be white and now that it knows it's gonna be dark out it goes to if a black display five. which is pretty handy so I got the uh, approach all set up and briefed for the RNAV, only nine or left at Opalaka. And as you can see out front, we are coming out over the Florida Everglades, and there is not a lot down there. So at night, it's basically pitch black. Definitely would be highly recommended to be IFR rated, because you will not have a good clear horizon, even though it could be a clear night. TBM 851 Tango Bravo calls Jingle out of maintain 6000. Jingle at 6000, 851 Tango Bravo. Alright, so there's a crossing restriction that we had. We'll put 6000 in our altitude pre selector. We only have to come down 1300 feet a minute right now, so we'll arm that and VS 1300 feet a minute. We're descending down through 10,000 feet. Put the landing lights on out there on the wings, you'll see. TBMA 51 Tango Bravo, kind of landing approach, 133.77. 3377, one Tango Bravo, have a good night. Good night. Miami, good evening. No, 851 Tango Bravo, 8,000, descend to 6 over Jingle. 851 Tango Bravo, Miami approach, good evening. Expect 9 left, information Yankees, current open block. Roger, we'll get Yankee. And we'd like to put on the request for the RNAV run only nine left, please. All right, we'll go get Yankee. Up block of tower information, Yankee, two, three, four, eight, Zulu, observation, wind, zero, seven, zero, seven, 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 se
So we're going to arm the approach. One thing, your Bravo Travis, no factor speed 170 and contact the tower 134.67. Good day. 170 on the speed and over to tower and over 851 Tango Bravo. Have a good night. We're getting all kinds of shout outs here today. Good evening. Hope Walker Tower, November 851 Tango Bravo and the Yard Nav 9 left. 851 Tango Bravo, Hope Walker Tower, runway 9 or left, clear to land. Clear to land, 9 left, November 851 Tango Bravo. All right, so got the power pulled back. Yeah, Getting back to that 170 on the speed. If you look down here on the approach plate, you'll see there we are. See the little airplane blinking as we're going direct to O'Kane. That's such a cool little feature. All right, we'll put the armrest up here and get ready to go to work. See, now we're almost on our appropriate speed, 170 knots. And we're turning our final approach course here. Actually got the runway out there in sight. See if you guys can see it out there. With all the lights out there, it is, uh, it's pretty tricky sometimes. Especially if you've never been to this area. Alright, so we're four miles to Sasbo, and that's where we're going to intercept the glide path. So you'll see here, there's our approach course, and there's our glide path. When that comes in and gets one dot above is where I'm going to go gear down. I'm going to put the first notch of flaps in. I've selected. Remember that there's a limitation for the speed is 178 knots. Put that first notch of flaps. And indicating. All right, so now you're going to see, here comes the glide path down. And when it gets to this one dot above, here's like where you have to be. One dot above is where I'll put the gear down. And by doing that, it'll be right on the appropriate speed and everything where you want it when the gear is down, of going down the glide path. So gear down, are you going to see down here, the red light blinking, letting you know the motor's running, and down three green. So now you're going to see we're going to start down the glide path. So the airplane is going to be right here, it should show for the glide path. And we're a little and bit to the left the of the approach the course. So hopefully the autopilot will correct for that. So I got the power pulled back now. We're going to get to around 110 knots of this approach speed. The airplane is doing a real good job. It's holding right on the glide path, and we're right on the approach course. That line is all lined up. And we're right at about 110 knots. I'll put the power to about 25%. We can go all the way down to 258 feet. And we'll let the autopilot fly it all the way down to minimums. And then I'll disconnect there and we'll hand fly it the rest of the way in. The lighting all around this runway and everything is all LED lights. Gives it a nice crisp look. 500. That's 500 feet to the ground. Call out. And we're about 200 feet to minimums. So we could still be in the clouds searching and looking for that runway. But as you can see out in front of us, there it is. This is pretty crazy. It shows you how low you can go. And right in there. That's our decision altitude. And we see the runway environment, so we'll continue to land. Yeah, look at that lighting, isn't that beautiful? And we're gonna start to pull the power back. Light idle. And there we are, center line. Go back into beta. roll out down there to Charlie intersection. Welcome to Miami, Florida, guys. November 1 Tango Bravo, turn right at Charlie, contact ground and off, good night. Charlie, going to ground, enjoy your night, One Tango Bravo. Yeah. When you're trying to exit runways at night, you always got this yellow line that you'll follow and they'll help guide you off. There you can start to see it right there. If you just follow that in, it'll guide you right to the appropriate area so you don't go into the grass. And we're holding our center line, right there will be our hold short line. Cross that and we'll contact ground. Ground, good evening, November 851 Tango Bravo, clearing 9 left on Charlie, need to go over to the signature. November 851 Tango Bravo, off the locker ground taxi to the ramp via Papa. Pop into the ramp, November 851 Tango Bravo, have a good night. Alright, well I hope you guys enjoyed that flight, if you did, please smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel. It's always fun having you guys ride along with me. Here's signature right over here to the right.
Alright guys, we'll talk to you again Sunday soon.